Hi Bubble folks, this is Damien from bubblehacks.io and I'm very excited to finally present you this video series on Bubble's new responsive engine. I've had the chance over the last couple of weeks to play around with it and I can tell you it has been really a quantum leap in terms of developing for mobile. If you're familiar with my old tutorials, you probably remember that we had to use a lot of custom CSS code and other workarounds in order to make our Bubble pages look nice on mobile. With the new responsive engine, that's pretty much a thing of the past and we can now very easily and quickly design really good looking things for mobile. So when we talk about designing for mobile, there is really just two types of pages that we need to know how to build. The first one is what I call a full height page. These are usually things like landing pages, onboarding groups, and so on. These are not scrollable and they should use the full height of the screen regardless of the size of the screen itself. And the second type of page, what I call a scrolling page, which usually displays some kind of content in Bubble often done with repeating groups, where the user is able to scroll up and down. For both of these things, I will show you a very simple way how to cover pretty much every case you need to build. So in this video series, today we're going to talk about how does the new responsive engine work in general, just have a very brief overview. Then in the next video, we're going to look at how to set up a full height page, and then in the third video, how to set up a scrolling page with repeating groups. Okay, let's dive right into today's content. What is the new responsive engine? How does it work? And how is it different from the old one? There's a few things to remember. One is it is built on CSS Flexbox. So if ever you're stuck, just go on Google CSS Flexbox and you might be able to find something that will help you. The second thing to remember is CSS Flexbox is all about parent properties and child properties and how parent and child elements relate to each other. You remember in the old responsive settings, you would usually set the responsive settings for each individual element. This is very different now with parent and child settings, and I will show you what this means in a bit. And the second thing is, we also now have responsive height. So in our old responsive engine, we only had responsive width, and we needed to use something like CSS to make our height also dynamic, and we can now do this directly with the responsive engine. Okay, let's dive right into it. I'm just gonna open a new page here in my editor. And the first thing you need to do, because this is still in beta, is to go to your responsive settings and upgrade the current page. All right, great. We have our page here, and I'm just going to add a few elements that we can play around with. So as I said before, the new responsive engine is all about parent and child properties. So if we have a group, or also the page itself, we can set different types of container layouts and these layouts will set how the child elements so these three groups which are inside of the page will behave we can then also on the individual elements set different properties that will further determine how they are aligned and also determine how children within these elements are aligned let me take you through this on a container layout we have four different options the first one is fixed which is pretty much what we had in the old world so we can just drag and drop things around or use our X and Y values and width and height settings to set the location and size of an element. The important thing to know here, this is not responsive. So in preview, if you resize the page, things will just stay where they are. This is really what you get is what you see. The second option that we have is align to parent. This will align the children, so these three groups, relative to the parent. And we have some option here that determines where this is. So for example, the yellow group here is aligned to top left. We can also align it to bottom left, to top right, and so on. If you go back to the parent, the third option is a row. This basically stacks our child elements from left to right. And then if I select a child, I have further options, which is in the case of a row, the vertical alignment. Again, the row stacks it from left to right. And for the child itself, I can set whether I want it to be to the top aligned, to the middle, to the bottom. I could also say I want to have it stretched, but this doesn't work because right now the child itself is set to fixed. If I set the child itself to something like a column, you now see that vertical alignment being set to stretch will use the full height that's available. So you see here it's all about child and parent relationships. You always need to think about both, whatever you do. Okay. The last option that we have is a column that's basically just a row from top to bottom. So we stack the elements from top to bottom. And if I select an individual child, I can say whether it's left, middle, or right aligned. 
no stretch option here. And one thing to note, we have this panel here that says next and previous and so on. This is used to determine in which order the elements are displayed. So if I select this black group here, I can just say next and it will switch position. Or I can also say, okay, make it first and so on. The next thing to pay attention to is our margin options down here. Margins are basically the white space between elements. So if I align everything to the middle here, just really quick, I can select, for example, this group here in the middle and give it a margin of top of, let's say, 30 pixels and a margin of bottom of 30 pixels. And we see how this adds some white space. We will use a lot of margins in the coming tutorials. A good practice is always to not use top and bottom margins on all elements, but use something like a top margin on all elements. Let's say 15 here and give it, give it also 15 here. And then only on the last element, if needed, give this a bottom margin. This ensures consistency and you always know what to actually do. The last thing I want to briefly talk about is element sizing. The most important thing to know is that the options that you get for sizing an element are dependent on the container layout. So if we are in fixed, we see that we get fixed values for item width that we can set. If we are in aligned to parent, that is either a fixed width or we can set a minimum and a maximum width. And usually then the exact width is dependent on the size of the children for row and also for column. It's basically the same. That's it for this video. In the next video, we will look into making a full height page setup where we will talk a lot more about sizing elements with the new responsive engine.